Hey there, my friends. Have you ever wondered how much it would have cost to buy an M1 Grand or an MP40 back during the Second World War? Well, today we're going to take a look at some of the most iconic small arms from World War II and see how they stack up when it comes to production costs. As we know, logistics and manufacturing play a huge role in the success of a fighting force in any armed conflict, and that was no different during the Second World War. So let's pull up our chart and compare the equipment used by the US, Germany, Commonwealth nations, Japan, and the Soviet Union, and see how much these weapons cost to make back during World War II. All right, my friends, so here is the chart we're gonna be using to compare all of our different weapons today. A Couple of important things to point out before we get started. So we're gonna be measuring all of these weapons in reference to the US dollar as it stood in 1944. Obviously the Germans weren't using US dollars to buy MG42s, but to keep things simple, I've run the exchange rates ahead of time based on the power of each nation's currency as it stacked up to US dollars. So we're gonna use that to keep things simple. If you want to do the calculations yourself though, there's gonna be a little key over there down in the corner to convert to pounds, Reichsmarks, yen, ruble, whatever floats your boat. Also, if you'd like to compare these to the costs in the modern standard, $1 in 1944 has roughly the same buying power as $17 today. Also, we have to understand that there'd be a whole variety of factors coming into play when it comes to production cost and execution here. The US wasn't facing the same material shortages as the Axis, for example. So the price points for each weapon are generalizations. So please keep that in mind before you come at me in the comments. We're just kind of trying to keep things simple here and get a generalization of what the cost for each of these would be. And finally, some of the weapons that I was trying to research proved to be really difficult to find a manufacturing price for. So that was especially so for the Soviet and the Japanese weapons. So if there are any things that you're missing here, weapons you think should be included that you don't see, that's probably why. But still, let me know down in the comments below if there's any other uh, particular pieces of equipment you'd be curious about. So with that said, let's get started here. I am going to crack open our list of weapons, and we're going to start out with pistols today. Um, we're not going to go in any particular order by nation. We're just going to grab some of the most common pistols used during World War II, and we're gonna see how those stack up to start out. So first, good place to start, we've got the legendary Colt M1911, which apparently in 1944 went for about $26, which is just crazy to think. Could you imagine buying a 1911 for 26 bucks? Obviously, you know, if you do the math, 26 times 17, it's a little bit more, but still, 26 for this, beautiful. So let's track this right down here, and we'll get our first one on the board. We'll slide it over to the American line, and we'll put it just over $25 to 26 there. Um, so our first section here, and we're gonna have to jump to some higher price points later as we get to the machine guns and some of the bigger weapons. Um, but this first page here, we've got our little chart going from $10 up to $60 US dollars. So our Colt M1911 right there at 26. Next up, hopping over to Germany, we've got our Walther P38 coming in at a pricey $12. It's amazing that they could get the production cost for that down to 12 bucks. That's nuts. I guess it kind of goes to show how much more complicated the M1911 was. Interesting. So we'll shrink this right down here and we'll get it just over the 10 to 12 there. And we can move these around as we, as we go along if we need to adjust. Next up, the classic, the icon of icons when it comes to German pistols, the Luger P08. Just a little bit more expensive than the Walther at $14 here. So I guess when they switch to making the P38 as the standard firearm for sidearm, not firearm, standard sidearm for German officers and stuff, they saved a couple bucks there, but 14 for the Luger, not too, too bad. Let's pop it right there, we'll cheat the Walther over a little bit and put the Luger right next to it. Beautiful. The train's going by, so please excuse me there. All right, up next, going over to Japan, we've got the Nambu Model 14, a whopping $19 for the Nambu. It's relatively expensive, um, quite a bit more expensive than the German offerings there, but still cheaper than the 1911. So we'll shrink that down and we'll put it just the 4R20 here on the Japan line. So as we can see, this is already starting to map out pretty good. Our German pistols are the cheapest out of uh, out of everything so far. Interesting. 
We'll see if that trend continues with the German weapons as we go along here. And we've got one more pistol today. The Webley Mark VI. Lovely service revolver for the Commonwealth troops there. At $12, the same as the Walther P38. Another cheap option there. Probably saved some cash because it was a revolver rather than a semi-automatic weapon. Um, but there we go. All right, so we'll put that on there. Not too bad. So right now, the uh, the American sidearm is leading the pack for price with our 1911 up at 26 bucks, followed by the Nambu at 19, our Luger at 14, and then the Walther P38 and the Webley at 12. And with that said, those are our pistols. Let's hop up to rifles now and see how those stack up. Our first, starting way back, early war U.S. rifle, the M1903 Springfield, a classic, at $41 for this bolt-action rifle. Obviously, the 1903 was replaced pretty quickly there for the U.S. Army, or all the U.S. branches, except for the Marines. I think they used that for a little bit longer. Um, but 41 bucks, not too shabby. So let's shrink that down a little bit, and we'll put it right over here, just to the right of our 40 on the American line. The 1903 Springfield. Up next, ooh, the M1 Carbine. Not too bad, 45, just a little bit more expensive than the Springfield, um, but for that smaller Carbine round, obviously. And uh, we've got the semi-automatic functionality now for uh, kind of a secondary weapon to give to all the like rear echelon troops and stuff. 45 bucks, it's pretty cheap, not too bad. So we'll get that right in between here of the 40 and the 50 mark on our American line. A little more expensive than our Springfield, but not too shabby. Up next, we gotta have it, the M1 Garand. 48 bucks, they got this just under $50 for each unit, and for such a state-of-the-art weapon, um, we'll see obviously how this stacks up to some of the other equipment as we go along here, but 58 or uh, $48, just shy of $50 for a semi-automatic service rifle, in 1944, impressive. So, shrink this down, whoop, and we'll get it just to the left of our 50 mark. A little more expensive than our M1 carbine, that is, <laughs> um, at $48 right there. All right, now we're moving over to our German main service rifle, get the Car 98K at the low, low price of $22. I guess that's what you get for sticking with. Um, the bolt action, but obviously you don't have the semi-automatic capability of our American counterpart there. Um, and nearly half the price of the M1903 Springfield, which is interesting. I wonder why that would be. Maybe the machining or the milling or something was just that much more expensive on the Springfield? If anybody knows, let me know down in the comments below. But anyway, let's shrink down our Car 98K, and we'll put this just to the right of our 20 mark on the Germany line. A little more expensive than the Luger, but there's your car 98, $22, it's crazy. All right, <clears throat> up next, our Japanese service rifle, the Arasaka Type 38. Now, I know this is the earlier version used by Imperial Japanese forces during the war. I couldn't find the price point for the later Arasaka, which obviously cut down on some of the production costs, so just keep that in mind here. But um, at the time, the Arasaka Type 38 was going for $18, very cheap for that uh, main service rifle for the Japanese military there. So we're going to put this over here. It's just a dollar cheaper than the pistol, which is crazy. The Nambu officer pistol was more expensive than the main service rifle. That's wild. So we'll put that down here, 18 for the Arasaka Type 38. Wild. All right, moving on. The legendary... Mosin Nagant, um, 1891-30. The Soviet weapon coming in at $8. I have no idea how they got this down to $8. That's crazy. I tried to like dig around as much as I could to see if there were other sources putting this at $8. Um, the only information I could find about the Mosin um, at this point in the war was that they got it down to $8. Obviously, Behind the Iron Curtain, the price points were kind of fixed and they had a lot more control than in some of the democratic nations here. Um, but, I mean, obviously we're talking about Germany and Japan as well, but a lot cheaper than what we 
we're seeing in the U.S. and the U.K. and the other Commonwealth nations. But eight dollars for this is insane. Um, and still, they didn't have them for every single troop. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people probably remember that iconic scene in the beginning of Enemy of the Gates or one of those first Call of Duty games where one guy gets a rifle and then the next guy just gets ammunition. It's just it's crazy. So eight dollars for our Mosin. This is officially the cheapest weapon that we have so far. Um, this is cheaper. It's it's all the way to the left of our our uh, chart here. It's cheaper than all of the pistols. That's crazy. So our Mosin, eight dollars. There you go. And then next we've got our Lee Enfield number four, UK Commonwealth Service rifle for thirty one dollars. Another bolt action. A little more expensive than the German counterpart, but still cheaper than its American cousins. We'll shrink this down and we'll put it just to the right of the middle of our chart here on the 30 mark. Don't have a lot of things in the $30 range yet. We'll see if that changes. All right, so there's one more rifle that I included here. Obviously this is a little different than the main service rifles here, but it almost became a main service rifle towards the end of the war. But this is the STG-44, the world's first assault rifle. The Germans managed to make this fully automatic intermediate cartridge for $28, which is wild. If this had come out earlier in the conflict, it's kind of scary to think of the impact that this would have had. Um, 28 bucks for that, that's crazy. So, wow, yeah, let's shrink that down. We'll put it right on here. That's bizarre. So for that, you're getting a, yeah, a fully automatic intermediate cartridge assault weapon for assault rifle, I will say, not assault weapon, assault rifle. Cheaper than the M1 Carbine, cheaper than M1 Grand, cheaper than the Lee Enfield, that's bananas. So, whew, wow. So the STG-44, $28. It's our most expensive German weapon so far, but still, that's whew, wild. So that's it for our rifles. Let's hop over to our submachine gun category and we'll see how these stack up. First up, we've got one of our earlier war variants here. The Lanchester SMG, the, the uh, Commonwealth submachine gun, early war submachine gun, $56. Just looking at this thing, you can tell that there's a lot going on here mill milling wise, um, pretty complicated just looking weapon if we don't even dig into the, the part breakdown and design of it. But $56, that's our most expensive weapon so far. And we'll put that on our Commonwealth line here. Way over on the right. So there's our Lanchester. Okay. As an alternative, sticking with the Commonwealth forces, <laughs> our Sten, our Sten Mark II. Just a bunch of metal whipped together to make a submachine gun. $10, just a little bit more expensive than our Mosin. That's crazy. It's cheaper than the officer service sidearm than the Webley pistol. 10 bucks for the Sten gun. $10 for the Sten. That's wow. For a submachine gun, amazing that they got that down to 10 bucks. That's crazy. Next up, the uh maybe the OG burp gun. If if you want to call it that, but the uh the PPSH41. Got to love the PPSH41. 20 bucks for this. A lot of firepower, high, super high rate of fire. You got the drum mag. So this is the more expensive, I should say. This is the more expensive end of the price points for the PPSH. Um, a little cheaper if it went with the stick mag. And towards the end of the war, they got the price down a little bit. Um, but 20 bucks, 1944 for the whole nine yards with the drum mag, amazing. PPSH 41 for all that firepower, 20 bucks right there. So look at that. You got your Mosins for eight. You got your PPSH for 20. It's cheap, cheap stuff. Effective stuff. Cheap stuff, but effective stuff for the Soviets down there. All right. One of my favorites. We've got the German MP40 here. Um, probably like the forefather of the well, MP38 and the MP40 of the stamped metal submachine gun design. This influenced a lot of things, um, including the grease gun that we'll see in a moment here um, and the STG44. Just seeing how cheap you can make these Simple, effective, rugged weapons. Um, the Germans got the MP40 down to $23 by 1944, which is pretty impressive. So if we stick that in here, it's just a little bit more expensive than, let's shrink down our car 98. A little more expensive than the main service rifle, just by a dollar. Um, but still a little bit cheaper than the STG 44. 
For a submachine gun, 23 bucks. Again, just a little more expensive than the PPSH. Solid. Stamp metal, keeping things cheap, effective. It works great. So MP40 right there. We've got a very crowded uh, like 15 to 25 range here so far. It's interesting. All right, next up, the American icon, the Thompson. So for this, we're gonna focus on the M1A1 Thompson. This is the like final variant that they were using around 44 D-Day and onwards. Um, this was the cheapest variant. So the earlier Thompsons were more expensive because they had more milled parts and just more complicated assemblies and they simplified, simplified the sights, simplified a lot of things as the war went on. M1A1 is the cheapest version. They got it down to $45 in 1944. So still pretty expensive for a submachine gun. Um, if you see this, you know, compared to the uh, MP40 and the PBSH, it's twice as expensive. Um, but we'll see what the Americans had to say about that shortly here. Interesting to note, look, the Thompson is as expensive as the M1 carbine. Boop. Which one would you prefer if uh, you had to spend $45 on a weapon. Would you want the carbine or the Thompson? Choices, choices. All right, so there we go. And then our final, and I kind of tease this, our final submachine gun, the M3 grease gun, taking that stamped metal design and just running with it, getting as simple as possible. And this is the M3, not the M3A1. The M3A1 was even more simplified, getting rid of that charging handle altogether. Um, but 15 bucks for the grease gun. You can see why this made so much sense for the Americans when it comes to a manufacturing standpoint. They could just make a bajillion of these and give them to everybody. So like originally one of the stories goes, well not stories, but interesting points goes that um, early war tank crews, everybody would get a pistol, an M1911, and there would be one Thompson assigned to the tank. Later in the war, after they came out with the M3 grease gun, everybody got a grease gun. So just huge increase in firepower um, for you know, personal weapons aboard tank crews once the grease gun came out. And then this was obviously assigned to officers, non-coms, a lot of other people as the war went on. But 15 bucks, just a dollar more expensive than some of these pistols down here for the M3 grease gun. Gotta love it. All right, so before we move on to our machine guns here, because all of the machine guns are, spoiler alert, all of the machine guns are gonna be more expensive than $60. So let's just take a little look at our page here as it stands so far. Um, Obviously, very crowded left side of the map here. Um, most of these nations managed to get their weapons manufactured for less than $30 a unit, which is pretty impressive. Um, the Americans are, well, with the exception of Lanchester, the British submachine gun, um, the American weapons are really the only ones that are in like the $40 to $50 range um, because I guess we just were spending money on stuff like crazy. Um, <laughs> but some of these other nations that were a little more, you know, compressed on manufacturing when it came to supplies and raw materials, they really managed to get these weapons down to cheap, cheap price points here, which is crazy. I can't get over the, the Mosin being $8. That's insane. The Sten gun, obviously, I think a lot of us knew that that would be one of the cheaper weapons, but amazing that they got that to $10. Um, the Grease gun's in a similar boat, just at 15 but bizarre. It seems like the, the real sweet spot here is right around, you know, 20 20 though. For the, for the Germans, um, for the Wehrmacht, 22 for the CAR-98, uh, CAR-98K, and 23 for the MP40, and that's gonna be outfitting most of your guys. That's pretty impressive too. And then just wild to think that they got the STG-44 down to $28. That's amazing. All right, so let's hop over to machine guns and check those out, see how those stack up. All right, we've jumped down to our machine gun chart here. And as you can see, our price point range on the top there has changed. So it's a little weird here scale wise, but we'll, we'll just run through it real quick. Starting on the left, we have $100, then 125, 150, 175 to 200. And then we're gonna do bigger jumps. From 200, it's gonna go to $500, $1,000 and $1,500. And you will see why in just a moment. So let's start here with, I think, is probably one of the oldest guns on here. I don't know if it is the oldest, don't quote me on that. But the Lewis gun, the British Lewis gun, um, we gotta love it. $248, just shy of $250 for this. So we've got a big jump in price compared to what we were seeing on our first page there with uh, the rifle, submachine guns, and pistols. 
Um, but our Lewis gun at $250, $248. We'll see how that stacks up. That's gonna be our first one here. So we're just gonna put this boop, just to the right of our 200 mark. Starting off strong with the Lewis gun. And we've got another British icon here, another Commonwealth icon, the Bren gun, um, which I believe replaced a lot of the Lewis guns as the war went on. This was the standard light machine gun. If anyone is more of an expert than I, because I am certainly not an expert on British small arms during the Second World War, um, let us know down in the comments below. But how, just how the Bren gun and the Lewis gun interacted assortment-wise during World War II. $160 for the Bren gun. Seems like a pretty good deal. We'll see how that stacks up um, with the rest of our options as we go along here. But there's the Bren at $160. A little bit, well, considerably, considerably less than our Lewis gun here. Um, about $100 cheaper for the Bren gun. Moving on. Similar price point here. The big old beefy Soviet DSHK heavy machine gun. Um, this went on a lot of armored vehicles and aircraft and stuff, but here we have it on um, a little dolly. $170 for that that big uh, big beastie there. So we'll get this down in our Soviet category. Whoop. At 170 A little more expensive than the Bren gun. Um, but, all right, interesting. And then up next, we've got two Japanese uh, machine guns here. Up first, we've got the Type 99 light machine gun at $321. That's an expensive... Uh, that's an expensive piece of equipment, especially considering how cheap we saw some of the other Japanese weapons. Um, 320 bucks for the Type 99. Interesting. Let's get it down here to the right of our Lewis gun. Type 99 at 321. And then knocking prices down a little bit for the Japanese here, the Type 11 light machine gun. It was only $139. And again, I, I'm not an expert on Japanese equipment during the Second World War by any means. Um, so if you know anything more about these two light machine guns and just like operationally how they compared, uh, let us know down in the comments because always curious to hear about that. So the Type 11 is our cheapest um, machine gun so far at $139, but still considerably more expensive than anything we saw on our first page. All right, moving up to the two German machine guns, the two iconic German machine guns, starting off with the older of the two, the MG34 at $125. For all that milling and, you know, delicate manufacturing that goes into this, the world's first general purpose machine gun. I have a whole video on that if you'd like to check it out. Um, $125, the Germans got this down to $125. It's pretty impressive. So we'll pop that right there. Boop. The MG34 is our cheapest and probably most effective um, machine gun on this list so far. But we managed to get it even cheaper with, you guessed it, the MG42. 100 bucks for the buzzsaw that was the MG42. Amazing. Stick that right there. That's bizarre. That, that, that This is probably the most recognizable and feared machine gun not even probably, the most recognized and feared machine gun on this list right now, the MG42, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, wild. Now compare that, obviously this is a kind of a different can of worms here, but Ma Deuce, the M2 Browning's $1,500 back in 1944. That's a pretty penny. That's an expensive weapon. And I don't know why it's so expensive. If anybody knows, please uh, please do let us know. But the, the American M2 Browning 50 cal, $1,500 for that. That's an expensive piece of equipment. And obviously it stood the test of time. We're still using the M2. Um, but, wow, 1500 it's wild. All right, let's round this out. We have two more American weapons to check out. Starting out with the good old M1918 BAR, the Browning Automatic Rifle. Um, just got in at the tail end of World War I here, but $319, it's an expensive one. It's an expensive uh, personal firearm, well, personal firearm. But, uh, you know, weapon to be carried by a single infantryman. Um, that's that's an expensive one. I mean, compare think about what we have, we were paying for some of our other American weapons, right? Like the grease gun, of course, is $15. <laughs> and I know these are two very different weapons, but um, even the M1 Garand was, what, 48? Um, it's a big investment in the BAR. Whoever's got that BAR, they, uh, 
keep in mind they got a they got an investment that they're they're dragging around there. So obviously the Americans thought very highly of this weapon during World War II because it was expensive to make these, and they did. They kept making them right through to the end. So the BAR, there you go. And then our final machine gun for today is going to be the old M1919 30 cal, the American 30 cal. $141, not too bad for that at all. Um, comparable to our, our Bren gun and our, um, our German options down here, but a little more expensive than the German ones, a little cheaper than the Bren, but there's your 30 cal. So here's our machine gun list. What do you guys think? Amazing, so that the that Germans, I mean, I, I guess it doesn't really surprise me too, too much, but the Germans were the expert of the machine gun. They got two, two of the most successful machine guns of all time, both down at $125 or cheaper. Don't really need to say more than that. That's just amazing. Um, next up, uh, Japanese Type 11, 139, just a little more expensive there, but not, not too bad at all. Um, the good old trusty 30 cal at 141. Then we've got our brand gun at 160. The D uh, DSHK at 170. And then as we move further, further to the right, the Lewis gun, the Type 99, the BAR, and then the very expensive M2. So let me know what you guys thought of that. Um, just running through all of these different firearms from the Second World War and just trying to see how expensive they all were. Um, just imagine if you had this kind of money now, what you could what you could buy with uh, with that, some of these weapons. $100 for an MG42, which is obviously inflation, these things change, but it's just crazy to think about. So let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. If there's any weapons that I missed that you'd like to see next time, maybe if we do this again, let me know as well. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, be well, happy building. Cheers.